Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. And this is Peter. And today we have the Apple iPad 3. And on the left hand side we have the Barnes & Noble Nook HD Plus. This is the 8.9 inch tablet. Fairly comparable in, in screen sizes. I mean the Apple iPad is a little bit larger. Uh, let's give you some specs so you know what you're playing around with. Apple iPad 3 9.7 resolution 2048 by 1536, whereas the Nook HD 8.9, 1920 by 1280. They both have dual core processors around the same uh, amount of RAM. Storage options heavily dependent on which model you pick up, although Apple offers more storage options as well as 4G LTE variants with uh, the iPad 3 and iPad 4. Really, this comparison is about the e-reading experience. We're going to look at e-books, newspapers, magazines, video content, and as well as app stores and what you can expect. Uh, fundamentally, it's Android and iOS. Two very distinctive uh, OSs here. You can see on the Nook HD 8.9, we have anything but the vanilla Android experience that you probably have uh, grown accustomed to over the years. Peter, tell us a little bit more about this. We have a little bit of uh, evidence showing it's, you know, Android kind of showing its uh, stock experience. You have the pages and you have wallpapers, live wallpapers. Um, this is all going to look pretty familiar to you guys because uh, a lot of uh, stock Android um, tablets and phones have these kind of settings. So, for example, if you go Nexus, and you set wallpaper, you know, you're getting your, it's not uh, not reacting to the touches like most of the Nexus Live wallpapers do, but you're getting a little bit more of an Android experience than, say, the Kindle Fire. Oh, there we go. I forgot to click done. Good one, Mike. Yeah. So you can see there that uh, you have your pages, you have your icons, you can move around from page to page. You know, set up the home screens you want to, customize the way you'd like to and you can pull things down off of the carousel up top which is uh, very similar to that of the Kindle Fire's carousel but uh, they do it in their own little way more three dimensions to it and why don't you uh, go through the uh, what the iPad is showcasing well this is the home screen right here this is pretty well how it looks with iPads right out of the box of course here's all the installed apps one thing I like about the iOS ecosystem is that a lot of first party developers really get behind it. So you'll find apps that are hitting the iPad and then maybe like six months to a year later will hit Android. So both of these tablets offer very different ecosystems to purchase apps, newspapers, magazines and content. I think uh, the Barnes & Noble store I think looks a little bit different than you say would that the iTunes store looks. And this is like where you would purchase like your audio books, all of your music and video. Uh, Barnes & Noble recently introduced television and movie rentals that you could see here. So they've made uh, great partnerships with a lot of uh, big name media companies so you could finally do that. And of course you can also do that with movies and TV shows on the iPad as well. Because this is a American only device whereas the iPad is very international you can uh, outside of the USA you can pay for and download the movies but you will not be able to watch them so beware that if you do have an American credit card and an American address on this device and you're outside of the USA you can actually still be charged for these rentals and purchases so something to keep in mind when you're traveling or you buy this outside of the US. Right. Um, with Barnes & Noble, of course, it's promoting their ecosystem and it's firmly integrated into the HD Plus as well as the HD as well. You might have noticed if you had earlier iterations of the Nook Color, Nook Tablet, the store looks uh, a very stark contrast to what you're used to. I do like the way that this is organized. Uh, iTunes and Apple does the same thing with Panorama, uh, very effective use of screen real estate. 
obviously there's a higher amount of apps <laughs> on Apple right. um, than there is on, on Barnes & Noble, but they both run their own curated app store. So um, Barnes & Noble is, you know, the guiding force saying, okay, you know, we'll let these apps in, we won't let these apps in. And Apple does the same thing. So uh, more or less the same core philosophies. But most of the big name apps like Flipboard, um, you know, Oregon Trail, Angry Birds, you'll find that on both devices. So the first thing we want to look at is ebooks. And we're going to use the default iBooks experience. And on Barnes and Noble, we'll just let it run whatever it's running, which is just the stock reading um, application it has. And we'll get to part one here, chapter one. Okay, so you can see that, look at uh, even just on the first chapter, how much uh, text by default fits the page. Right. We haven't changed any font settings just yet, so this is the stock experience on both. All right. Uh, they both do read in landscape and portrait mode, so you're not, uh, you're not relegated to reading exclusively in landscape mode or and portrait you, mode. And you do get the bind on both devices when you change them into landscape mode. Yeah. They have uh, text options on both. And you see uh, it had uh, all the text options cut off from uh, Barnes & Noble, so you couldn't use any because it was set to the publisher's default. And that is how the publisher or the author has um, intended you to read the book, whereas you can turn that off and change everything live. You can see here you can change text, um, margins, line spacings, uh, everything does kind of refresh every time. You can see on the Apple that uh, you have a bunch of settings as well for text styles. And everything changes live without the full refresh. On the Barnes & Noble, you actually have not one, not three, but actually six different um, themes. So you can see what Michael's doing with sepia or sepia, uh, white and black. We can do all that with white, black, takes a little bit longer, and sepia. But you also have gray, brown, and off-white. And what you see Michael has done here with scrolling is that it pretty much pre-renders the entire book so you can scroll endlessly until you've reached the end, whereas uh, Barnes & Noble just has the traditional page turns. Both of them make highlights, both of them make notes. You can see highlight, you can make uh, <coughs> notes, make a note so we can look at the keyboards here. Um, I think they both take up an appropriate amount of space given the screen sizes. Uh, I think I like the way the uh, keyboard looks on the iPad a lot better. You see there's some shadows at the bottom of the keys, lights and darks, whereas this is just kind of like a flat 2D experience. One thing that's always uh, irks me about the iPad is when you capitalize letters. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> they you don't, don't change. Yeah, these don't change, so you don't... Uh, Whereas on Android, when you press the capital, they always change, so you know exactly whether you're going to type a capital or a lowercase. Also can make highlights. You can, can change the color, and I think uh, the Apple completely wins out in the amount of color choices for highlights, but uh, that's just a little extra thing the Apple has brought to the table. You have, um, you can share quote, contacts, Facebook wall, via Twitter. And that really taps into Nook Friends. And of course, with Nook Friends, you can lend out ebooks uh, to your friends one time basis for up to two weeks. Not all books are lending enabled, but you do have that feature. And you can do that right on your. Nook Tablet HD. Uh, if your friends don't have a Nook Tablet or maybe not the same taste in books as you do, you can check out LendingEbook.com, which uh, helps connect users up with each other. You can think of it as a virtual ebook club for Kindle and Nook books. Exactly. So you can see they have very similar features. Um, that's pretty much the reading experience on both of these guys. They both have the page turn animations as well. Yeah. I mean, of course, with Apple, 
Um, you could download other ebook stores so you can install Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Sony, and a ton of other com right. uh, companies. With Barnes & Noble, with their app store, they don't have any of their competitors listed, so you won't find Kobo for Android. And the Nook Tablet HD does not allow you to sideload in your own app. So even if you wanted That's to install... Thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could root the device, but then you lose all the functionality. Right. Uh, next thing we want to do is look at uh, magazines. For the release of uh, Skyfall here, we have uh, Rolling Stone with uh, James Bond, Daniel Craig. You can see the resolution on um, the I Apple iPad is tremendously higher than the uh, Nook HD, but it almost looks like the colors are a little bit different. You see a lot more blues there, whereas you see more of a raw natural light experience on this one so with uh, that picture in mind we'll give you guys a couple seconds to make the decision there you can see that so we'll turn pages we have the page turn animation on uh, the Barnes & Noble uh, magazine because this is purchased directly from Barnes & Noble We have a list view of uh, much like this, kind of the same experience. Yeah. Something you can do with the Barnes & Noble that the iPad cannot do, actually, is this little scissor cutting icon. What it is is, say you're reading an actual magazine and you want to tear out a page. Well, they si they've simulated this, they've bottled it into here, and you can now actually see the rip line uh, participate in scrapbooking. So you see we have a Goody Reader scrapbook portfolio. We're going to add it to there. So what you can do from there is click on library, scroll down to your scrapbook, my scrapbook, and from there you can see all the stuff including the IKEA ad we just took in our scrapbook. And we've taken these from different magazines um, and uh, you can see that they're all organized into here. Yeah, it's scrapbooking rules. <laughs> you know, awesome. we, we, we really l enjoyed that feature. Um, and same with like article view, which right. uh, will take text, like articles like this that are very complex, a lot of custom styling sheets, and it'll condense it much like you can get the text view on the iPad. Where it turns it more into an ebook friendly format. Right. A lot of the time on magazines, it's hard to see some of the articles only because the text might, might be small or maybe, um, you know, there might not be a font you'd like. This changes it into more of a, a widescreen, full screen experience. So it's a lot easier to read this way. And you can swap it back to magazine view at literally the click of a button. Yeah. So both distinctive experiences here with uh, magazines I think I enjoy the extra added screen real estate on the iPad 3 because you can fit more text on the screen and because it has higher resolution companies like Zinio or um, you know even comics which we'll show you next release custom editions that are HD whereas with this you don't really get access to those HD comics. Right. Like Barnes Noble sells comics, and th this will be the next thing that we look at. Uh, but they aren't in HD, unfortunately. So see, uh, the, the carousel has uh, included things that you've recently used or downloaded. So you can always find things there if you're not sure what directory to look in. So here's the um, full screen image of the cover page. So we'll let you look at that. If you're just joining us once again, the iPad 3 has far greater resolution than the um, Nook HD Plus. Colors are very different too, so they display them a little differently. A face only a mother could love. <laughs> you know, well, if that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if your mother looks like that too, it's right. all good. Not that I'm saying your mother looks like that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you can see... <laughs> Uh, you can see here that comic book experience is fairly comparable. Right. Um, there's, you know, when you're zoomed out to like the max, it's pretty well like the same sort of screen. Like, there's really not a huge distinction in the length and width of right. things. But then you could go to guided view and you could do the same thing with like both of them. And unfortunately on the uh, 
<coughs> Barnes & Noble, because this isn't using the Marvel app, uh, all it really does is zoom into where you've tapped. It doesn't really go into the individual panels. So it's more like you're reading an actual comic book and you have to kind of zoom with your own eyes, or pinch and zoom in this case, to get the best view of each individual panel because there is no direct panel view on these. Yeah, so I would say Barnes & Noble with magazines looks awesome. Oh, absolutely. Features that are not found on the iPad or any other tablet on the market. When it comes to comic books, I think I'm a little bit more behind the iPad 3 or the iPad 4. Just because of the larger screen, it does make things a little bit more vibrant. Plus, you just have more options to purchase comics. Barnes & Noble, graphic novels only. Graphic novels are normally fairly outdated. You know, they'll release six comics and then two or three months later, they'll do a graphic novel version. Whereas with uh, iPad, you can download DC, Comixology, uh, Marvel, Dark Horse, any of those companies and get single issues the day that they're released. And that's one thing that comics in 2012 have really come a long way, even till end of 2011 where they're doing digital first, where the comic will hit the stores and on that same day they'll hit the stores. So if you're a comic book lover, I do like the versatility of like the iPad or vanilla Android tablets that will right. allow you to download all that third party right. stuff. Okay, so we've showed you news we showed you ebooks, magazines. I think newspapers should be the next thing that we take a look at. So we have the Wall Street Journal, which was purchased from the Barnes & Noble Marketplace on the Barnes & Noble. Oops. And on the iPad, we're going to view Wall Street Journal app, which is its own individual application. A little bit different in the, in the ways that they do it. You can see that this is on that side. Uh, yeah, it's kind of rolls reverse, but... And you can see there's that guy, it looks like. So it does... Uh, yeah. That might be him. I don't know. It looks like him. I don't know. Uh, if you click on an article, you get uh, kind of an ebook experience. You can see you have full font options, much like you do in an ebook. You know, highlights, add notes, look up, find a book, dictionary definitions, the whole ebook shebang inside a newspaper. Um, I'm, I've never been a fan of this. I kind of like the way the Kobo Arc deals with it whereas it has the traditional newspaper look, and from there you can zoom in and read the articles from there, but I'm, I've, ne I've not really been a fan of the way it's laid out here, because it doesn't look like a newspaper, and it just kind of throws me off, as well as a, a bunch of other people we have uh, asked whether they've liked this content. Yeah, delivery. you know, newspapers, it seems <laughs> like, no matter who you use or what company you deal with, they all don't look like traditional newspapers. Right. And, and, you know, magazines we've looked at, and it's almost like the real magazine experience is involved in digital exactly. form. And, you know, e-books, uh, even comic books, it's, it's true. Whereas newspapers, it seems like that sort of thing that's never really crossed over to digitally properly. Well, we've seen that on the Cobalt Arc where you, when you click on a newspaper, it's the newspaper. But you click on the newspaper app or the downloaded newspaper on the Barnes & Noble, and you end up getting this personalized version from Barnes & Noble where the articles are here, there's no ads, there's nothing newspaper-y about it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, of course, companies like Press Reader uh, do offer probably the closest experience that you're going to get. But, I mean, it's a third-party app. Right. You're not going to find it on here, but it is available in uh, the Apple market. So we've looked at pretty well everything to do with reading. The next thing that we want to show you is a side-by-side -side video comparison on how these both do with the same video. Okay, so with this uh, video, obviously we're watching them in, in portrait mode because 
filming them side by side in landscape mode is not going to be able to come across well on camera. So with this, videos pretty well look the same. They do, I would say. The colors are very similar. Neither one of them is noticeably more vibrant than the other. I would say the apples a little bit, but that's if you're really going to get into nitpicking which one's uh, you know, going to come out ahead. But uh, the audio on both is very similar because they really only have the one speaker on the back, which is a little bit strange seeing that the uh, Nook HD Plus's more price efficient counterpart, the Nook HD, actually has stereo speakers, which was uh, a little bit of a surprise to us. But you're just getting the one speaker experience on both these devices. So. Uh, one thing that Barnes & Noble has told us is that in a firmware update, they're going to be introducing SRS True Media audio capabilities in the Nook HD+. Plus. So that is the same sort of technology found in the Kobo Arc, which really enhanced their sound and allows you a little bit more flexible control over bass, trebles, and just boosting audio. So you should be able to almost get double the... Like, if you were to pump it up to the max, you should be able to get... It double is what we've heard it on video. Right, kind of like having an onboard equalizer. Exactly. So we've pretty well compared most of the reading experience, but also video too, because we recognize that tablets do this and a lot of people really want to. We haven't showed you the internet and music and all that sort of stuff because we're a goody reader and we're more focused on the reading experience. So please comment on this video. If you have any ideas for future videos, let us know at youtube.com slash goodereader. And for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and everything else, make sure you check out goodyreader.com and for a comparison on the Apple iPad 3 and the new Barnes & Noble Nook HD+. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.